Hey guys, how you doing? I'm back. And so I just wanted to first just remind you, I am still going to be putting out the video of why the end has come. But the why isn't the most important thing. It's how we actually react to the why. And are we going to stand for Jesus Christ? Are we going to proclaim Jesus Christ? Are we going to completely follow him wholeheartedly and give our life completely over to him and also witness to others about him, about his love, about his grace, about what he has done for us, saving us, and also about his soon return. But I wanted to approach a couple things that uh, through a study I was doing the other day, this actually is in Luke chapter 7, starting in verse 36. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you, and then we'll discuss it here in a moment. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, which is, asked Jesus to come and eat at his house. And he went to the Pharisee's house. And he took a place in, at the table, and behold, a woman from the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. In standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair. Wiping with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to him, If this man was a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman she is, and who is touching him. Hmm. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answered them and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. A certain, a certain money lender had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one I suppose for whom he called the larger debt. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. And turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you, uh, do you see this woman who... Uh, when I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears. And when Jesus has entered your house, what have you done for Jesus? Did you show Jesus love by loving others? <clears throat> when he entered your house, what did you do for Jesus? I'll go ahead and continue. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves a little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. A couple key things I want to point out here. First off, obviously, this woman, I'm sure, was an uninvited guest, but she sought out the Lord and she made a way to get close to him. And when he entered the house of the Pharisees, he didn't do anything. The Pharisee didn't do anything for Jesus. And this woman did everything for him. You know, we as Christ followers, many just believe that Jesus Christ is just a... Uh, a vending machine. 
you put in your 25 cent prayer and you expect him just to spit out all these blessings upon you. When he entered your house, when he entered, when he indwelt you, what have you done for him? He already saved you. He already made a way for you when you called upon the Lord. But what have you done for him? It says here, when I entered your house, you gave me no water for my feet. Have you done everything possible for Jesus Christ? Have you shared about his love and grace? Have you even spoken to anybody about him? Have you even spoke to those around you about the times and the seasons in which we live? The end of time, the time we're in right now, moments before his appearing to remove those who are truly in love with him. You know, it goes on to say, you gave me no kiss. But from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. Do you daily commune with Jesus Christ? Because I have to tell you something. He is at the door. And he is knocking. And will you open the door to him? Will you answer the door? You know, when he entered your house, did you hang out with him for a little bit? And now do you ignore him? That word that he gave you, did you forget that word? Did you forget what he has done for each and every one of us? But did you forget what he did for you? <clears throat> I'm saying these words not to uh, pass judgment, just on the contrary. <clears throat> I want to remind you what he has given us. We all need a reminding sometimes. And he has made a way for each and every one of us. You know, this uh, woman is a symbolization of us because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Father in heaven. And that's why Jesus Christ came, was to make a way to redeem mankind back to the Father because of the fall in the garden. That's why Jesus Christ came is to redeem mankind, and the ultimate redemption is about to take place. The redemption on the cross, which pointed the way to the times and the seasons in which we live right now. The greatest event since that cross is about to happen, and very few are talking about it. When he entered your house, just like as when Jesus entered the house of the Pharisees, what have you done for him? And just as they do not kiss him, this woman has not stopped paying attention. Do you pay attention to Jesus, or is he only that vending machine I talked to you about, I spoke about, that just you want a blessing for him whenever it's convenient for you? You know, again, like I mentioned before, do we put in our little 25-cent prayer in expecting a massive blessing in return. Because one thing is for certain, Jesus Christ hears our prayers, but it does go on to say that you pray and you do not receive because you pray amiss. The most important thing in our life is our salvation. Our walk with Jesus Christ has more value than you could ever imagine. Do you and have you completely submitted your life over to him? Are you treating him like this woman treated him? Or are you treating him like the Pharisee treated him? We must all take account for our actions. But the one thing I want to share with you is if you were in the Pharisee camp, and I hope you know what I mean by that, <clears throat> in this actual uh, situation with what is going on here in Luke. Love Jesus. Thank him. And just like that woman with her tears washed the feet of Jesus and then anointed him with that, with that ointment. Anoint Jesus with your time. With your love, with your confession of love to him. 
And part of that confession of love is sharing your love with those around you. Do you pay attention to him, or again, is he just the blessing vending machine? You know, it's uh, it's very telling. <clears throat> who is who? I'm going to continue on. So in uh, Luke 8, starting in verse 5, it goes on to say, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it, and some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture, and some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out, and some fell among good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. He who has an ear, let him ear. Now, obviously, when we go down to verse 11 in Luke chapter 8, it goes on to describe what actually took place. So Jesus goes on to describe. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The one who is along the path are those who have heard it. Then the devil comes and takes it away, takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved and the one and the ones on the rocks are those who when they heard the word received it with joy but these have no root they believe for a while and then a time of testing they fall away and as for what fell among the thorns they are those who hear but as they go on their way they are choked out by the causes and the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and be fruitful with patience. And, you know, it's obvious that uh, Jesus Christ is telling us that, hey, listen, you must guard your heart. You must not allow the world to creep in and take over after you've given your life to him. And he even goes on in uh, <clears throat> Luke eight sixteen. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed. But he puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be made known and come to light. Take care then how you hear, for to the one who has more will be given, and for the one who has not, even that he thinks that he has will be taken away. Listen, <clears throat> I wanted to put this word out because I felt prompted to. We all know that we are in the last of the last days and that it is so crucial that we prepare the way of the Lord, that we continue to look up because our redemption draws near. Because we are waiting and looking for our blessed hope in the appearing of our glorious God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who will rescue those who are eagerly waiting for him. I hope this message actually uh, reaches someone. There's a couple key things that uh, took place when I was doing this study that were extremely profound. And um, maybe in the next video, I'll share why I'm even making this video. But uh, stay tuned, and uh, the Lord willing, if we are still here by the time I make the next video, which it should be uh, the video of why the end has come, unless the Lord leads me to put something else out. I just do what I feel the Lord is speaking me, speaking to me at that very moment 
to actually make a video about. Friends, family, loved ones, we are so close. Jesus Christ is coming. He is coming. He is not a vending machine. We must understand to truly follow and to truly love Jesus Christ is a walk. And it goes on to say that, you know, he, well, first off, he, he never promised us um, an easy life. As a matter of fact, he said the opposite. He said, you're going to be persecuted because they persecuted him. You're going to be hated because they, being the world, hated him. So we must ask ourselves, what the true message is, what the true word is. And when we find that, wholeheartedly by seeking, Jesus Christ will show us the way. And that light that I just spoke about will shine forth from us. Because we know that this world is, we are not part of this world. This world we are not meant for this world. <clears throat> Jesus Christ will be taking those who love him into the wedding feast, into the marriage supper, into the wedding chamber, into his Father's kingdom. Either trust and believe that or you don't. And I challenge and, and encourage you to really study scripture if you do not trust this. That those who do and are maybe on the fence, I want to encourage you to completely give your life, give your heart, give your mind, give your body, give your soul, give your spirit over to Jesus Christ. He's coming for you if you want him to. Don't reject him. Accept him. Repent right now. Please repent. Hear this message and repent. And you know why I'm saying this. Because Jesus Christ is speaking to your heart. All right, my friends. I love you. And as always, it is in the name and by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Savior who will soon come really soon, very soon. To redeem and remove those who are waiting for him. How blessed, guys. I love you. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye.